people than anywhere else in the world. Another area where China has rocketed ahead is high-speed rail. They unveiled a new system today. Beijing to Shanghai, 800 miles in about five hours, less time than it takes to fly New York to L.A. For China, high-speed rail is what the interstate highway system was to the U.S. back in the 1950s, which raises again the question, when it comes to trains, why is America, home of the Iron Horse and the Golden Spike, still on the slow track? We have two reports tonight, beginning with NBC's Adrian Mong, who rolled the rails from Beijing. It's smoother, sleeker, greener than a jet plane. The Harmony Express, clocking 187 miles an hour, connecting China's capital Beijing to its commercial center Shanghai in just under five hours. The Beijing-Shanghai link is 824 miles long. That's about the distance between New York and Atlanta. If you took Amtrak, that journey would take you 18 hours. China spent $34 billion to build this rail link in just over three years, nearly a year ahead of schedule. How did they do it? It is a one-party regime, so there's no political opposition. There's no rule of law. Uh, there's no transparency, so there aren't as many environmental hearings and things like that. Uh, and then they've got the money. They also had a little help. Our technology is imported from France and Germany, said this engineer, but we developed our own trains. With that technology, China already has 12 high-speed rail links under construction, hoping to build 10,000 miles of high-speed rail by 2020. But critics say it's costing too much money for the government to build and for passengers to ride. It's a technological feat, but uh, I think uh, it's an economic loss. Earlier this year, the railway's ministry chief was fired for allegedly embezzling $30 million, sparking concerns railway authorities might have cut corners at the expense of safety but maybe also in a rush to catch up. There's still a huge gap between China and other developed countries, says this railway official. We want to be like Americans. We want a strong country and a good life. Our train is dead. A life the Chinese are rushing to embrace. Adrian Mong, NBC News, on the high-speed rail in China. This is Tom Costello. If they can build it in Asia, why can't we build it here? Well, in California, high-speed rail is on the way. Construction begins next year on what will eventually be a Northern California to Los Angeles line promising 150,000 jobs. This is about as American as you can get. Good green jobs, putting Americans to work. At the moment, America only has high-speed rail in the Northeast, from D.C. to New York and Boston, where century-old tracks and winding routes keep the Acela from ever hitting peak speeds. Across the country, Amtrak right now rents space on freight lines, but to go faster than 125 miles per hour would require an entirely new electrified network of high-speed rail lines. The Obama administration is moving ahead. The ultimate goal, connect 11 megacity regions with a network of high-speed track helping to relieve congested roads and airports. But it won't be cheap. $53 billion over the next six years, $500 billion in federal, state, and private money over the next 25. Already, Republican governors in Florida, Ohio, and Wisconsin have rejected federal high-speed rail money, afraid they'll be on the hook for cost overruns. The truth is that this project would be far too costly to taxpayers, and I believe the risk far outweighs the benefits. But in Sacramento, train giant Siemens Engineering is ready to shift from building light rail trains to high-speed systems. It would mean hundreds of thousands of jobs. It would mean billions of new economic development. This is the same debate I'm sure they had 50 years ago when Eisenhower signed the interstate bill. An argument over whether the nation can afford to build a new high-speed network or afford not to. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington.